photographs you take, the more documentation you present and preserve the story for the next generation. Happy about their lives here. But what was in reality? How they were captured on the streets? If they even saw Nazi soldiers, they started to run. Because they were uncertain about their future. If they were captured, they were sent to concentration camps, to prisons, or to the Third Reich. Krakow, of course, it is at Gothis independence. So we can imagine a lot of people here. Of course, they were celebrated. They hoped that everything will be okay in their lives. That is why in this room we can see photographs of ordinary Krakow citizens in ordinary conditions. So they got married, they traveled somewhere, they believed that there won't be any kind of war anymore. Also, when we speak about Krakow citizens before Second World War, we do not divide them into Poles and Jews. We can say that there was no so much such division. Both of them were in Krakow administration, in Polish army. And of course, they were working on it to be a developing one. Also, the last celebration that took place in Krakow before the Second World War was on 6 of August 1939, 25th anniversary of first campaign, first Polish army led Krakow to fight for First World War and then to fight for independence. Thousands of people from all parts of Poland, even from abroad, came here to celebrate and, of course, to commemorate people that were fighting for their future. It was established already in September 1939, and it should be like a link organization between Nazis and Jews. Actually, their main aim was to implement all Nazis' orders here. That is why after Second World War, a lot of Jews blamed this organization in collaboration with Nazis. But actually, people who worked there, they also tried to save lives, to help people. And they also were taken to extermination camps. There were established four hospitals. Problem was with medicines. Of course, Nazis didn't supply any of them. So doctors who were there, they tried to do their best to save lives. But sometimes they were just not able to do it. Orphan house. A lot of children lost their parents during the war. There were some women that took care of them. But for children, it was too hard because some of them didn't understand what was going on. They didn't remember other kind of life than in this ghetto. There was a story about one woman, and she was reading a book for children. There was word field. One small girl asked, but what is a field? You know, it's such area with green grass, and there you can find, for example, a cow. But what is a cow? Are you drinking milk? Yes. How do you think, from where is this milk? It is smuggled from Krakow. No, milk produced by a cow. Then this girl asked, I want to say come one day, would I be able to? They didn't find answer. Because probably it was, no, you won't see cow. You won't have any other life than he. Can you imagine how much it was all crowded? Because some people came back to Krakow to start new school year. Some were taken to Polish army barracks. Some people tried to escape from the city because they were afraid about their lives, about lives of their relatives. So first of all, they moved to the east. But what is more ironic? When the Soviet army entered Poland from the eastern side, these people moved back to Krakow because they were more afraid of Soviet army than of Nazi schools. To use any kind of transport, Trams were divided into two parts, part for Nazis and part for non-Jews. But also
Germans, it was just propaganda. Of course, they told that Krakow was a German city and for centuries it was occupied by Poles and Jews. And that Nazis actually liberated it. After this, names of streets, squares were changed. Main market square was called Alter Mark Platz. So, first of all, Nazis just translated it. But a year later, it was called Adolf Hitler Platz, like a new city under occupation. Operational group. It consisted of functioners of security service, security police. One department of this organization was Gestapo, Geheime Staatspolizei, Secret State Police. This was one of the most terrifying organizations in Europe. People were afraid of it because for them it wasn't enough just to kill, but they tortured to death. In Krakow was created headquarters of Gestapo with treason. Till nowadays there exist cells where people were waiting for interrogations, cells for executions. And till nowadays there are scratchings. People lost words, their hopes, beliefs, and praise. 10, 20, 100 person were just killed. Starting from 1943, there were such lists. Here written that first three persons were already killed. But if something would happen, all others could also be. And predominantly, they were. Because hundreds of executions took place in Prague. Some of them were even public executions. Limited with help of special card system. Only with cards, people were able to buy something to eat. For Nazis, daily ration was about 2,000 calories. For Poles, about 1,000. For Jews, 300 up to 800 calories. For us, it's very hard to imagine how much is it. Cup of coffee with chocolate is already 500 calories. So can you imagine that some people got even less than this? Also, according to League of Nations, person who do not work should have about 2,000 calories, person who works hard about 4,000. Poles and Jews were forced to work for more than 12 hours a day without any days off. So for this amount wasn't enough. People tried to survive. They tried to organize the so-called black markets, where they were selling everything. All their property to gain money. Things stolen from German factories, things from farms. The problem was with prices. They were too high. For example, piece of bread that costed about 50 zloty. Person who works a whole day in Krakow got 5 zloty salary. So he should work for about 10 days to buy only a piece of bread. Of course, hunger caused a lot of diseases. Dysentery, typhus, pneumonia were not unknown in this city. The main railway station. But how much it had changed? First of all, its name. Krakow Half the Banko. Krakow Main Railway Station. But also people had changed. Nazis came here for holidays for having fun, Poles were taken to the Third Reich for different kinds of work. First of all, Nazis used propaganda. They told, please go to Germany. You will have better lives, better jobs, bigger salaries, so you will be able to send money back home to your families. Of course, it wasn't the truth. Sometimes from the Third Reich, people got letters. Please send me something to eat, because here I can't buy it. After it, no one wanted to go to a third rough. Nazis started to catch ordinary people on the streets and just send them there. Also, Jews were resettled. Before Second World War in Krakow lived about 68,000 Jews. And because Krakow became capital of this administrative unit, here were able to stay only 15,000. So first of all, Nazis faced the question. 43,000 people, what to do with them? They were taken to small cities, villages. Of course, it doesn't mean that they were given houses, farms, or work to do. No, they were just left there. Some people tried to escape from Poland. They took other names, surnames. They moved first of all to Hungary, and from there, they tried to escape even from Europe. Some people came back to Krakow because they didn't want to leave their houses their families. They didn't want to leave city where their ancestors lived for centuries. 
and in March 1941, in Krakow left about 17,000 Jews. 3rd of March, Nazis established the so-called Jewish living district, or just ghetto. Ghetto, it was closed. For people it was forbidden to leave it. Only if they were employed somewhere in Krakow, every day with escort of special industrial guardians, they were taken there and then back. Around ghetto were built such walls. We can see that they had form of tombs in Jewish culture or matzahs. It was made intentional. People who lived here, they felt as they were already dead. Ghetto was really overcrowded. First of all, Nazis counted. Two square meters per one person. But a little bit later, when even more Jews were taken here, they counted one window per four person. But actually, in very small rooms, lived up to five big Jews. People who didn't know each other before Second World War were forced to live together in unbelievable conditions, without water supply, without toilets, without anything. But the hardest time was during winter. Winters in Poland were really severe. Temperature was up to minus 20 degrees. So, of course, people needed to heat their rooms. Coal was smuggled illegally from Krakow, and the price was so high that only one room in a house was heated. Of course, people gathered in this room because it was just impossible to be in some other places. But the ghetto was so much of a crowd that even Nazis didn't know what to do with all this. In January 1942, took place conference in Wannsee that gave answer to the so-called Jewish question in Europe. What to do with 11 million Jews in Europe? Reinhard Heydrich told to exterminate all of them. Nazis started to build gas chambers, crematoria, so extermination camps all over the Europe. Now that the first experiment of Cyclone B already took place in Nazis. He was a businessman who wanted just to make profit. But from the other side, he also tried to help, to save lives. There are evidences that during resettlement in Krakow Ghetto, he told his employees to stay in the factory for a night. So they were not taken to extermination camp, they were not killed. In 1943, Nazis decided to liquidate Ghetto. Again, people were taken to some concentration or extermination camps. Schindler asked for permission to create smaller subcamps here near his factory where people were able to work and to live. He can say that living conditions were much better. People got bigger ration of food. They were not beaten nor killed. He was doctors and stomatological cabinets of someone to care after them. Also in this factory were employed some pools, so uh, some things were smuggled to this subcamp. Second threat was in 1944 when Nazis started the so-called evacuation in Krakow, or just elimination of all material evidences of their crimes. All camps should be liquidated. Prisoners, weaknesses also should be liquidated. Again, Schindler asked for permission to remove the whole camp with all employees to Brunitz. Nowadays, the Czech Republic, during that time, there was located subcamp of Ross Rosen concentration camp. And that is when was created this well-known Schindler's list. But it wasn't like in a movie that Oscar Schindler was sitting and writing some names, surnames. No. It was created in plush concentration camp. Schindler only asked not to divide families. If one person was listed, all his family, relatives should also be listed there. In such way, 1,000 names from this factory were on this list, and people were taken to Brunitz. Also, if you remember from the movie that by some kind of mistake, women were taken to Birkenau. This is true, but it wasn't a mistake. In Brunitz, there existed no women's part of the camp, so they should wait somewhere to be built. And Nazis had chosen the worst camp in the cold death factory, Birkenau. For a lot of women died there because of living conditions. But when that women's camp was built, Schiller came to Birkenau and asked for this woman back. Commandant told that he didn't want to search exactly for this woman, that Schindler was able to take some others. But Schindler argued that these women were really good specialists. He had lists of names 
and he had found them. Some women were already waiting to be guests, and it was the only case when someone left guest chamber alive. Shinla took them to their families. And so one day to Shinla came Nancy and he told that not far from that subcam he had found several wagons with people inside. Of course, this were Jews. They should be transported to some camp. But it was January 1945. True. Nazis thought that these people in the speckles were already dead. So it made no sense to transport them somewhere. They left them just on the ramp. Schindler took the speckles to, be, uh, to Brunitz and they managed to open them. Some people were still alive. They were located in the hospital. And Schindler's wife, Emily, took care after them. We can say that production in that subcamp wasn't really successful. Yet during the first years of war, Schiller really made a fortune in factory. During the last years, he spent almost all money to save lives. He bought, he bought some products from other factories, made stamps of his, and sold these products for a very much. He wanted to pretend that there was some kind of production. And in May 1945, these people got second chance chance to start new life. War was over. Of course, Schindler, like a Nazi, should escape from there. Jews gave him letter where was written that he didn't participate in extermination, but he saved their lives. And a ring with sign who saves one life as if he saves the whole world. After Second World War, Schindler moved to Argentina. There he started some kind of business, but it wasn't successful, so he came back to Germany and started new interests there. It also wasn't successful. Schindler was a very bad businessman. Every business that he started, it just collapsed. Except of this factory because he didn't provide it. It was operated by his employees. That's why, till the end uh, of his life, he was supplied by Jews whose life he saved. They told that that time they should help him, so they gave him money for life. When he died, he was buried in Jerusalem at Mount of Olives. And he's the only person of German origin whose grave is located there. Also, every year, thousands of Jews are coming there and say, thank you for saving our lives and lives of our relatives. At times, he even ordered to hide Jews in churches and monasteries, because he didn't care of what religious views were these people just wanted to save lives. In Krakow were also created underground theaters where people were able to relax for a moment, forget about all these events. There was a cafe, Don Plastico, where artists were able to gather and to freely speak about all events in their lives. But 16th of April 1942, artists from this place were arrested and sent to concentration camps. So we can't say that this era was over at some kind of moment. No, it lasted from the very beginning up to the very end of occupation. Commandant of Lashu War Camp. If you remember that crazy man from the movie who didn't start his race without shutting people from his balcony, it was him. Of course, in reality, he didn't look like in a movie. I'll say he was a six feet. And uh, this is true. Every day he came to Plaszczuk camp and just shot people because he was in good mood, because he was in bad mood, because he just wanted to do it. In March 1943, he ordered liquidation of Prague ghetto. 13 of March, Jews from ghetto A were taken to Plaszczuk war camp. The next day, 14th of March, Jews from ghetto B, those who survived, were transported to Auschwitz Birkenau. From about 2,000 people that were taken there, only 500 were given a chance. They were accommodated in Paris. Others were taken directly to the guest chambers. And it wasn't about people to survive, but every day thousands died only because of living conditions, lack of sanitary conditions, hard work, <coughs> hunger, and continuous punishment. Initially, this was ordinary war camp, so we can say that for some kind of period, Amon God was got here. He was able to do everything what he wanted to. In 1943, 
In 1944, they captured into concentration camp. What was the difference? Head of it was assessed. All prisoners were property of the Third Reich. So officially, Nazis couldn't kill them because they wanted to. They needed to give some kind of proof why this or that person died. That is why they created the so-called Book of Death. Where it was written that this interval of several days, hundreds of people died, for example, because of heart attack. Of course, it wasn't the truth. They were killed by Nazis. We can say that here were no gas chambers, no crematories, but thousands died only because of living conditions or because they were killed by Nazis. In 1944, Nazis started this liquidation. All barracks were demolished. People were taken to other concentration and extermination camps. We can say that this place was just perished from this world. Nothing left there. 